What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand lymphatics and lymphedema so that you can properly treat your patients and also pass the NPTE. The lymph system is essentially a second set of veins that transports bigger molecules like proteins, interstitial fluid, and immune cells. These molecules are collected near your capillaries and they're filtered through lymph nodes, which are centered around your armpit, your groin, and other places throughout your body. Lymph from your right arm is sent through the right lymphatic duct, while the rest of your body sends its lymph fluid through the thoracic duct, although both end up at the subclavian veins where anything useful gets recirculated into the body. Lymphedema occurs when there's damage to the lymph vessels, causing an accumulation of lymph fluid as non-pitting edema in the extremities. The excess lymph fluid damages the surrounding tissue as well as the one-way valves by causing hypoxia, chronic inflammation and fibrosis, and increased risk of infection. Primary lymphedema, like Milroy's disease, is caused by genetics. Secondary lymphedema can be caused by dynamic insufficiencies, like heart failure or pregnancy, which increases the amount of fluid in the body and overloads the lymph system, or mechanical insufficiencies where there's damage to the valves, like with cancer or filariasis, and so it can't handle the existing fluid in the body. Lymphedema has a pretty typical progression starting at zero where there's no symptoms. It progresses to one where there's reversible pitting edema when the body's temperature increases. At stage two, there's irreversible non-pitting edema stem or sign and fibrosis. Stem or sign is when the leg is so swollen that you can't pinch the skin between the toes. The final stage is stage three, also known as elephantiasis, where there's hyperkeratosis, warts, aka papillomas, skin folds, and increased infections. Treatment focuses on prevention as well as complete decongestive therapy. This includes manual drainage of the area through lymphatic massage or vasopneumatics. It also includes compression therapy using short stretch bandages to start. These bandages have low resting pressure, meaning that they're not going to compress the area and further damage the valves, but they have high working pressure meaning that when you're working, when you're exercising, and your muscles expand, because the bandages don't expand with them, it's going to push any excess fluid out of the area and recirculate it into the body. Patients will progress to wearing compression garments during the day and wearing these short stretch bandages only at night. Of course, exercise is also a really important part of treatment, but you have to progress slowly from proximal to distal areas, as well as low to higher intensity. This therapy usually happens in two phases. The first includes outpatient therapy for usually four to six weeks, where the therapist helps them control their symptoms and teaches them how to manage it on their own. They then progress to self-management. At any point, if the lymphedema worsens, they'll return back to phase one and go to outpatient again to get it under control. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy. Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. This parasite lives in lymph vessels and damages them over time, leading to multiple infections and a high likelihood of elephantiasis. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy, or you can comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Good luck studying. Go change the world.